Uh, Casey, we just heard the guys talking about Arizona State's defense down low, and when we talk about the Wildcats and the Sun Devils, we're talking about a couple of seven-footers going at it today. Yeah, let's start with Warren Washington, bottom right of your scorer, corner of your screen. He was brought to Tempe specifically for games like this. He's a transfer from Nevada. He has got to stay out of foul trouble and protect the rim against Umar Balo, one of the most improved players in the Pac-12. Last year, Balo averaged seven points a game off the bench. This year, 18 points a game. He's a focal point of this dangerous offensive attack. At the helm of the Wildcats, his second year, Tommy Lloyd, the son of a carpenter, a former Division III player, 45-5 and five in his first 50 games with the Wildcats. On the other side of things, Bobby Hurley, his eighth season in the desert. He is seeking what would be his fourth 20-win campaign at the helm of the Sun Devils. Arizona State just saw their nine-game winning streak snapped in San Francisco. They've been so good at home this year. Those seven-footers at midcourt getting ready to tip. And we are underway, controlled by Arizona, one of the great offenses in the country. They're averaging 90 points a game, second in the nation. And Kerr Carissa is the, the straw that stirs the drink here. He has the ball, a fantastic passer, especially down low to his post guys. Now, Balo got a low touch and had it knocked away. He was the last to touch it at Sun Devil Ball. Defensively is guarding the big man, right? Arizona State did a nice job on Michigan center Hunter Dickinson when those two. Hunter Dickinson had 14 points on 6 of 14 shooting. They're hoping they can do that to both Balo and to Bellis today. Desmond Cambridge Jr., he missed the last game with the stomach virus. There was a huge loss for Arizona State. And a turnover by D.J. Horn. Prisa kicks it into the corner. Courtney Ramey, he has been one of the conference's best three-point shooters. He bags his first try. Ramey has been the most steady shooter, I would argue. He hasn't had a bad shooting game this entire season. Has made multiple threes in every start so far. Cambridge tries to answer. Meanwhile, Balo, who has not only been one of the best scorers in the conference, he leads the Pac-12 in rebounds. He pulls down his first as we get our first foul. Now start the new year off big with a chance to win $1,000 playing Fox Bet Super 6. Download the free Super 6 app on your phone now and then enter your six-game predictions from today's matchup for a chance at $1,000. Officials gathering together by the free throw line. A lot of intriguing matchups in this game, Aaron. One that I really have my eye on is Devin Cambridge, number 35 for Arizona State. He's going to have to go against Azulis Tubelis. Devin is only six foot six, and Azulis is six eleven. A flop was called on Arizona State. I went against Warren Washington. Interesting. Probably trying to draw some fouls on Umar Balo. Get them in foul trouble. That's one way to slow down this incredible front court duo. The best in the country. We saw one of the other front court duos that was really good that preceded our game. Aaron Xavier with Jack Nungy and, and Zach Fremantle. Uh, to Ballas, this is what he does so well. He gets towards the rim, but can't put it through. Here is Frankie Collins to bring it across. Collins taking it all the way to the rack. Frankie Collins, to me, is the first true point guard that Bobby Hurley has had in his coaching tenure. To Ballas misses with the left hand. And Frankie Collins is just so steady. He has not shot the ball well personally, just 36% overall from the field. But his 5.5 assists are higher than any player that Bobby Hurley has coached in a Sun Devil uniform. And there he goes with the bank. Bank's open. Tempe. Well, to your point, he was just 1 for 12 at San Francisco. Probably trying to do a little too much with the absence of Desmond Cambridge Jr. This time, Tubelis is able to put it through. The Pac-12's leading scorer gets his first bucket. 
Well, this Arizona Wildcat offense will not be deterred by just a couple of missed shots or fouls. Their bread and butter is down low. Azuz Tubelos and Imar Balo are trying to win that valuable real estate right underneath the basket. Ooh, Devin Cambridge, a bad miss. He's had some big buckets this year. He averages 10 a game, but misses on that one. Prisa. Prisa puts it through. Now he's an X-Factor, and this, this fan base here in Tempe has been all over him in warm-ups before the game. But he can flat-out shoot it. Now quickly into the front court, and Tabellis was the last to touch it. He can't believe it. He tried to throw it off a Sun Devil. Well, shooting has been up and down for Kirk Creasa this year. He started the season hot. Then there was a seven-game stretch where he was ice cold. Now he's hot again in his last two games. He's been shooting 8 of 14, and he adds to his total there. Here's Horn, pulls up at the elbow. And it's pulled down by Pella Larson. He's had a great stretch recently. His last five games averaging 13 points, five boards, and four assists. So many versatile pieces, including Larson and Tubelis as he shoots a three there. Interesting, Aaron. Tubelis doesn't shoot a lot of threes. Last game against Morgan State was two for two from deep. Collins with a nifty spin cycle, and Cambridge is able to finish at the rim. But right now in the half court for the Sun Devils, Frankie Collins getting wherever he wants. And Tabellas converged, no whistle. That's a clean block from behind. Cambridge, and an offensive foul. Now Larson, that's not the first charge he's taken this year. He takes it right of the chops. By the Sun Devils. Looked like a couple of different Sun Devils got a piece of that block shot, by the way. They're all there for it. Yeah, who's going to get the, the stat on that one, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Arizona, with an early three-point lead just underway here in the first half. Arizona State has been flawless at home this year. Meanwhile, Arizona has just one loss. It was their only other true road game. That was a disappointing loss in Salt Lake City at Utah. Cedric Henderson Jr. on the floor now for the Wildcats. Meanwhile, the second splash from deep from Creesa. He bags his second. Uh, his confidence is second to none. It, you know, I would argue his passion and confidence are the biggest reasons why he's at this level. It's not because he has physical gifts. He is a tremendous competitor. Horn takes a deep two. Has to bank it in. It's pulled down by Larson. Here comes Creesa across midcourt. Larson with the head fake. Foul, and he'll shoot two. That's on Desmond Cambridge Jr. Our player to watch is sponsored by Geico. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. And we've already seen him a couple of times knock down a triple. That's Kirk Creesa. He's tied for the top spot of the Pac-12. When you look at his... Assist per game just over six a contest one of the top figures in the nation in fact I mean he's loved in Tucson and despised here in Tempe and just about everywhere else Kirk Creesa travels to but love him or hate him Aaron His production is so vital to Arizona passing and shooting six assists per game. We showed that graphic He's the pace car for this up-tempo Arizona offense which ranks 11th nationally in tempo now, what, what's there not to like here? Is it, is it the headband? Is it the bangs? Or just the fact that he's a really good player on a really good team, Casey? Uh, I think all of the above. Plus, he's always sticking his tongue out <laughs> after every made three-point shot. I said, Nunez has that denied. Henry Vesar, the freshman out of Estonia, who just checked in, sends that to the front row. Another seven-footer coming off the bench for Tommy Lloyd's squad. This is one of the tallest teams in the country, Arizona. Vesar, good rim protector and a good three-point shooter on the offensive end. Well, Vesar had something to say about that also. You have to be careful of that. Washington has it come to another seven-footer. 
Horn, a little floater, splashes through. So, first bucket for DJ Horn, Arizona State's leading scorer. They have to have an efficient game from DJ's, the only Sun Devil starter with experience in this rivalry game. Anderson Jr., little start stop. The Campbell transfer, last touch by Horn, will stay on this end with the Wildcats. This defense for the Sun Devils is really fun to watch. You know me, Aaron. I, I'm much more of an offensive guy. Defense optional games are my favorite. But I really enjoy <laughs> the activity level, uh, especially DJ Horn. Des Cambridge, who's not in the game right now, is fantastic as well. Deflected, and Tabellis gets the bunny. Miscommunication there from Arizona State. Two guys go to Kirk Creesa. That is the power of a guy who's drilled two threes already. But if you double team anybody for Arizona, they have the weapons to find the open man. And Creesa, the game's leading score early with seven. Horn practically from the logo. Instead, it comes to Vesar. Teresa pulls up, wants his third, front iron, and it will be a foul assessed on Pella Larson. Well, this is not the start that we saw in this matchup last year. If you remember, Arizona State got out to a 9-0 lead. This place was on fire today. Arizona has come in ready to play, and we talked to head coach Tommy Lloyd about it. Their only loss this year was a blowout loss lost by 15 points in Salt Lake City to the Utah Utes. And Tommy said, we came out soft from the start, and we're going to make sure we don't do that today. Washington doubled up. Good pass. Gaffney recently checked in. Gaffney kicks. And it goes to the Wildcats. Teams going pretty deep into their benches right now. We see it right here. Boswell, we got Basar out here. Cedric Henderson Jr. with the ball right now. And it gets this off the window. Henderson, his first points. He averages eight a game. Yeah, Cedric's had to make the biggest adjustment. He averaged 34 minutes a game at Campbell last year. Now just 21 minutes in a bench roll. But he knew what he was signing up for when he showed up to campus in Tucson. But a long athlete, six foot six, and can score the basketball. Man, the, the Wildcats just have so many weapons. Just move the ball side to side. You're going to find an opportunity to drive or kick out. Henderson over 1,300 career points. You can combine his numbers this year and, of course, his numbers at Campbell before transferring to Tucson. Three rattles out. And pulled down by Courtney Ramey. Ramey, another grad transfer. He comes over from Texas. Base our entry pass deflected. Looking for Tabellas. We'll stay with the Wildcats. That is the high-low action that I alluded to a couple minutes ago, Aaron. What does that mean? High-low action is when one of your bigs, which Arizona is one of the few teams in the country that plays with two bigs, flash one big to the high post area or top of the key while the other is posting down low, and that high-low pass is difficult to guard. Kubella swings it over to Boswell. Henderson from the wing. So much height on the floor, even without Ballo on the floor for Arizona. Neal penetrates and kicks. They swing it up top. Gaffney almost has it stripped. Puts up a shot and banks it through for his first points. I really like Alonzo Gaffney's game, and they need him off the bench. A super long athlete who... You know, smartly passed up that three-point shot. Arizona State 0 for 6 from 3 so far. And Tabellis takes a wide-open look, straightaway 3, and he buries it. 
Yeah, that's his seventh three of the game, or excuse me, of the season for two Bellas. Not what he normally does, but he's starting to develop it and get more confidence. Now, Ramey gets the interception. He weaves his way across midcourt. High low instead. This is picked off by Jemiah Neal. Neal, who started the last game with the absence of Desmond Cambridge. Muhammad tries to kind of heave one through. Here's Ramey, transition wing three, no good. And Brennan gets the rebound. The dangerous game right now that Arizona State is playing defensively. They have not got that in transition. Arizona is getting open threes so far. They're four for eight. Sun Devils got to dig in and make them work a little harder. Nunez in traffic finds Gaffney. Neal will take it. Flagged down by Brennan. A fresh 20 seconds. Neal foul. That'll have a timeout on the floor with 10.20 to play in the first half. Azulis Tabellas, the conference's leading scorer with a rare three. Team, it's on the road, okay, but losing by 37 points, this Arizona State team is way too good to allow something like that to happen. And Bobby Hurley said, we just flushed it. In fact, they didn't even watch film of that game as a team. And guys like Frankie Collins and Des Cambridge texted Bobby on their way home during Christmas break to say, Coach, we're going to be ready. That's not going to happen again. Yeah, he said that the, they watched the movie Cinderella Man instead. That is Bobby Hurley's go-to movie in tough times for his teams over the course of his coaching career. He said even his son was the first to suggest this is the time. Break out Cinderella Man, Dad. Yeah, you can't do that too often, right? Break out the Cinderella. <laughs> you got to choose that one wisely, and it was probably appropriate. Although a really slow start for Arizona State. 0 for 7 from 3. They have yet to attempt a free throw. It's been slow going on the offensive end. Uh, it was Frankie Collins with a couple of quick buckets for the Sun Devils. He's been quiet since. Yeah, he pulls up and he hits. A nice injection of life by Gaffney. His second bucket already. And analytic followers probably who don't like this Sun Devil group, Aaron. They are going to take a lot of contested pull-up two-pointers, but they can make them. Bono back on the floor. He had an extended absence on the bench. Bono backing down. Front iron, and it falls to Brennan. Nice job by Duke Brennan, pushing Ballo out, making that catch about 15 feet away from the basket. Oh, Gaffney. Brennan offensive rebound, and he puts it right back up. Tip in no good, rebound Henderson. And now a handsy, cheapy foul there on Gaffney, wishing he could have that one back. How about the activity level of Duke Brennan? Freshman coming in and his first experience here in the rivalry has been very active. He had a good game. He's one of the only guys that actually played well against San Francisco. Yeah, it's interesting. You look at his numbers in that blowout loss. 12 points off the bench at San Francisco. It was in garbage time, so I wonder how much stock you can put into it. But it did show something, and we're trying to carry that over to today. Meanwhile, another three splashed down by the Wildcats. That is Arizona's fifth. It's Pella Larson. And Pella Larson, one of my favorite players in the conference. He went from sixth man of the year last year. Now he's a starter. He certainly earned those minutes. I still think that Pella Larson has yet to play his best basketball of the season. Now, last year, previous meeting against the Sun Devils, 14 points, 3 for 3 from distance. That Cambridge layup is no good. Collins trying to get back in the scoring column. Sun Devils get a couple of cracks at it, can't convert. It's Ramey to push it across. Risa. Finding Larson who gets bumps and will stay on this end. Now Larson's field that he ran right into Brennan, 6'10, 235, the freshman Duke Brennan out of Gilbert, Arizona. When Kerr Creesa puts the ball on the deck, Pella Larson and guys like Courtney Ramey know to back cut because Kerr Creesa always has his head up. Sure, he likes to score points too, but Kerr Creesa's superpower is his vision. 
How about that cut? Ooh, Larson cannot put it in. An easy look. He's frustrated. Yes. He caught looking. That was Duke Brennan, and that was a, a they wanted to switch out onto that first initial stagger screen. He gets caught, but Larson can't make him pay. And so he missed the easy shot and gets whistled for the foul. That's his second. And Tabellas checks back in. Brennan out for the Sun Devils. Keep an eye on Des Cambridge, number four. They need him and his offense to get going. Well, Tabellas well, was able to hold on to it and save it. Riso was looking up ahead to Ramey, but instead, quickly back in the hands of the Sun Devils. Cambridge Jr., wing three, lets it fly, and they are still looking to bag a three-pointer. They're 0 for 10. The fans here are so antsy, too, to see one go down. A block on Washington. First foul on Warren Washington, the seven-foot senior. Timeout on the floor. Number five team of the country having its way with... And it has been some fine efficiency for the Wildcats behind the arc. Meanwhile, Arizona State 0 for 10 so far from distance. 24-12 Arizona. Sun Devils one for the last nine from the floor. Creso weaving through. He gets it back. They swing it around. Tabellis, offensive rebound going back up and contested by Washington that will stay with Arizona. How about the ball movement? Passing up good shots to get even better shots. And even though that three ball didn't go down from ball, it is still a fantastic display of unselfish play. Arizona second in the nation in assists per game. They're averaging nearly 21 per contest. Yeah, also the deep. best shooting team in the country. Creso rattles out. Bolo is fouled. I mean, Bobby Hurley has sensed that they just gave up, I think, two offensive possessions on that possession alone. And if you're going to allow Arizona to get three or four cracks at it, you are not going to be successful. Bobby Hurley is steaming over there. It can't just be Warren Washington, the seven-foot senior center. Everybody's got to come in and help out. That includes Alonzo Gaffney, number 32. Des Cambridge averages about four rebounds a game. So does DJ Horn. Well, you look at his score, and you would maybe think, Casey, that Omar Ballo has had a bigger impact Offensively, he spent a lot of time on the bench after, of course, starting. Minutes went by where he wasn't on the floor. That's his first point of the day. Make it now two. Well, he's only taken one shot as well, so it's not like he's been super involved and just gone cold. They haven't really needed him much, and that's a sign of a good team. Nice pass. Played the seven minutes here in the first half. That is an easy look. Good dish for sure. Desmond Cambridge Jr. with his first points. Des Cambridge really good. And see how he plays the passing lanes there in number four. You cannot be clever with the ball. He'll take it. Now, Ballo gets stuffed, and they're going to call a foul. It was Gaffney and Washington right there. Nice drop-off pass from Kirk Kreese. Ooh, there was not a lot of contact there, especially on the, on the top. Is there contact on the body? I mean, that's a, that's a tough call there. That's a clean block. It's hard enough to stop this Arizona offense w without calls like that. That's the second foul on the seven-footer Warren Washington. So Bono right back to the line. He's made all three attempts early. Washington to the bench as Brennan comes back in. And Umar Balo, Aaron, you and I both know he's from Mali. He's one of, what, I would say four notable centers in the country of college basketball from Mali. Nafali Dante from Oregon. Adama Sinogo, who we just saw play from UConn. Keba Keita is a freshman for the Utah Utes.
and Umar Ball, all of those four guys are from Mali. Like, what's the average height of a man from Mali? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> Arizona has been perfect from the line. Arizona State yet to attempt a free throw. Cambridge Junior can't connect. Short possession there for Arizona State. Abalo pulls up just beneath the free throw line. His first field goal put through. Boy, Arizona starting to run away with things here in the first half with 6.09 to play. More than doubling. Like Fremantle were awesome. They combined for 31 points in that game against Sonogo. And Donovan Klingon, who is a freshman, and he comes off the bench. And then North Carolina, of course, we thought they were the preseason number one team in the country. They have five losses already, but their front court is not the issue to me. Armando Baycott and Pete Nance are special. Abano and Tabellas combining for over 40% of the Wildcats' points this year. Brennan. Fighting for it in the scrum, and he is able to draw a foul from Balo, his first today. I am tipping my proverbial cap to Duke Brennan, who I, I we did expect. We asked Bobby Hurley about this. Freshman, yeah, big stage. Duke Brennan has not played a lot, but when you're playing Arizona with Balo and Tubelis and even Basar coming off the bench, you need your biggest players to play some minutes, right? Warren Washington is on the bench right now with two fouls, and Brennan has been awesome with his activity. That's his first point as Balo checks out. Jemiah Neal to the bench as well for Arizona State. Now Brennan gets both. Under six to play in the first half. 30 to 16 Arizona leading. Henderson. Under 10 to shoot now. Now Ramey, shot clock dwindling down. He's got to put it up. Oh, and he man. hits. <laughs> I mean, that was half luck, but half skill, because Courtney Ramey has been awesome. He's the rare five-year starter. Transferred from Texas with a four-year starter for Shaka Smart, and has really settled into his role. Right, Gaffney can't connect a deep two. Arizona State. Shooting practically 25% from the floor here in the first half. And they're, they're not and they're comfortable yet to make giving, a three. Vesar was trying to post up down there, Aaron. They're not comfortable giving him the ball right now like they are this guy right here. Uh, Tabellis, he gets fouled. He has seven here in the first half. Late clock, get the balls to, to your best player, and that's a mismatch, kind of. I mean, that's Des Cambridge. It's a mismatch in size, but I would argue Cambridge is the best perimeter defender. Active hands that Bobby Hurley has at his disposal, but that mini battle went to Tubelis. That's the second foul on Desmond Cambridge Jr. And the bonus now, Arizona. Tubelis at the line for one and one. He's got to have good memories here in Tempe. I'm talking about Azulus Tubelis. Aaron, you remember two years ago, the COVID season, it was Tubelis who had the tip in at the buzzer in this building. It was off a of James Akinjo air ball, but it gave the Wildcats the win, 86-84. And gets both free throws now. One of the best free throw shooters in the conference. That's at 6'11", by the way, you need to put that into context. No, context. Normally, 80% foul shooters are guys who are like 6'1 or 6'2". <laughs> Here is Collins from the corner. A foul underneath. That's about us. 80% from the line. Sixth best in the Pac-12 this year. 
as Casey bags on all guys of average height. <laughs> I'm just saying, I want to give six, six. I want to give two bells his, his proper due. I mean, you know, I understand guys over six, eight. It seems like they never shoot above 70%. It's just like something that, that there's like a glass ceiling on those guys. But two bells is the uh, exception to that rule. A thousand base are his first, by the way. Daphne and he hits the Sun Devils first three-pointer. They began the game 0 for 13 Now Basar he heaves and you know, He's two for nine on the year from distance. He might be while takes his next one Collins can't put it through at the rim And Tabellis gets the board. The Arizona is Comfortable in a track meet. They want to play like this style. A block underneath. That is on Brennan. And that will take us to break. Arizona having its way with the Sun Devils here in the first half. Under four minutes to play in the first half from Tempe. And the number five team of the country looking every bit of it so far today. 34 19 Arizona leading Arizona State. Cabanas at the line for Arizona. We talked about Azulis and his efficiency. Here it is in full color, shooting 69% around the basket. Aaron talked about the 80% at the foul line. And then look how efficient he is at the three this season. Last year, he only had 10 total made threes on the year. This year already, he has seven, including one tonight. He's leading all scorers so far today with 11 points. He's been perfect from the free throw line. This is knocked away. They're going to call a foul. A foul on Ballo. That's his second. And that's not what Tommy Lloyd wanted to have happen, especially a ticky tack foul like that. Pick up his second foul with under three and a half to play in the first half. Foul trouble is a theme already. Aaron Umar Bala with his second. Warren Washington, the starting center for the Sun Devils, has had two for the last several minutes. The two guys that we actually highlighted out of the starting lineups are on the bench right now. So testing the depth of both of these rosters. Up in Cambridge. It's the front end. I first saw Devin Cambridge two years ago, Aaron. We, we, I was working studio on FS1. We ran a highlight of Auburn at Georgia, and Devin Cambridge had the best dunk of the year. This is two years ago, 2021 season. During a break in our game, just go to go to YouTube and Google it. It was Devin Cambridge off the glass. They threw it off the board to him. He's got some serious hops. Meanwhile, Frankie Collins. That's his second foul. Double bonus now for Arizona. A rare miss from the strike from Presa. Bobby Hurley yeah. doing his doing his magic over there on the sidelines Aaron we saw Danny His brother who's the head coach at UConn get a technical foul in the second half And Bobby's hoping that he can keep himself under control not cost his team any points today. We'll see And yeah, the Dan Hurley technical was a, a critical moment of the game They were down three with 225 to play. They flipped the script Brennan Able to put it off the glass. Brennan with four points in the first half. Some really valuable minutes for Arizona State, all things considered. Especially oh, with the foul trouble from Washington. Yeah, big time. And then how about the battle of underclassmen down there with Basar for Arizona and Brennan for the Sun Devils. Pretty fun. Future of the Pac-12 right there. To Bellis underneath the rim. And it's an offensive foul. You can tell on the smirk of Vajulis' face that he knows. Watch the hook right here with the off arm right there. Yep, easy. The referee is standing right there.
Horn. Arizona State shooting under 30% from the floor in the first half. Bothell brings it back up top. Henderson feeds. Basar. Now Henderson, a little floater. Wow. I, I thought that was a good defensive possession for the Sun Devils. They did everything right. They made Basar kind of kick it out under duress, and they still score a bucket. Well, Basar contests. Cambridge was going to the rim. Sun Devil ball. Watch the collapse there. Could have been a foul, wasn't it? And Cedric Henderson Jr., it's the second time we've seen him, Aaron, drive to his right, and he's got a bevy of different moves. We saw him get all the way to the cup that time with the floater. You've got to have multiple shots in your arsenal if you can't finish above the rim. Under two minutes to play. This is not free. So the skip and the one-hand hammer to Bellis with a capper of what has been a dynamite first half for the Wildcats here in Tempe. And more chance for U of A. Feeling like a home game at the McHale Center. A much-needed answer on the other end. That's just... Starting to chip away things from DJ Horn. But but a big shot. I, I know that this is now a 15-point lead, but we're still have plenty of basketball left to be played. And that shot by DJ Horn is not only important for Arizona State, but certainly for Horn himself, who has really, really struggled. The game, coming into this game, he was 12 for 40 from the field in his last three games. He has struggled again today. But he's got a shooter's mentality, just like this guy at the free throw line, Kirk Riso. Those guys have short memories. They're going to continue to fire. Uh, Criso, one made free throw shy from reaching double figures here in the first half. And he does. So Tabellis and Carissa both in double figures in half number one for Arizona. And keep in mind, with 100 minutes to play in the first half, and a, right now a very lopsided game, Arizona doing this without really Ballo. He's had just one made field goal. He has six points in total. This is last touch by Arizona. I like the offensive set. That's Austin Nunez, number two, freshman point guard. But Aaron, he made a mistake. He had a curl into the lane, and that's got to be a lob pass. He tried to make it just a straight chest pass. It gets deflected. Throw that up in the lob. Let Duke Brennan go get it. Daphne, back iron. And it falls to Brennan. He fights underneath, and Brennan having a really strong first half. Now, where would they be without him? I, I'd ask you. They'd be, you know, down, down 20, 25 points maybe. He's been special with his activity. Getting uh, an easy one to go around the rim. Arizona takes a timeout with about 25 seconds to play in the first half. Playing against Arizona, if you... Any team in the country can play fast, but can you play well at high speeds? That's the question. And this Wildcat team, they shoot 64% in transition, which is even better than last year's team, which shot 60% in transition. Risa finds Vesar. Vesar with a pretty two. His first points. Really impressed with Kirk Kreisa, his poise in this one. It looks like he's been there before because he has excellent passing today. And five assists for Kreisa. He averages six a game, tied for tenth in the nation. And the half will end with the number five team of the country basically doing what it wants so far today against their in-state rival, Arizona State. This one has been dominated by the Wyndhams in the country and Tabellas and Balo. And overall, Arizona 
has been limited to just 10 points in the paint, and yet they've still been able to get points elsewhere. That's just how balanced this Wildcats offensive attack is. Second in the nation in points per game, averaging just over 90 a contest. Washington is trying to make up for some lost time. Held scoreless in the first half and a lot of time on the bench with two fouls. Now you only have just eight points a game. They're not going to throw the ball to him a ton, but he's an excellent pick and diver to the basket. That time the, the pass was low. He's got the hands to catch it, but he can also catch lobs. Pella Larson. Frankie Collins. <laughs> what was that? That's Devin Cambridge. Not even better than they thought. Yeah, they throw lobs. I was talking about throwing lobs to Warren Washington. Devin Cambridge might be the best alley -oop finisher on the team. And Arizona's running a goaltend on that. There is Collins, coast to coast. The Sun Devils have come out with some energy to begin the second half. Here we go. Now we got ourselves a game. This what we thought would happen in the first and a tip pass. He Of basketball, the Sun Devils have played all day. And it's interesting how seeing the ball go through the rim a couple of times gives you even more energy on the defensive end. Brown suddenly back in, and Ramey trying to quiet the crowd. Last touch by the Sun Devils in Cambridge. Getting hands in passing lanes is one of the specialties of the Sun Devils defensively. And DJ Horn, the 6'1 junior, getting up. That was a Urshkoi four on zero fast break. Aaron, you'll see a lot of those in Pac-12 basketball. Well, Collins gets a steal. Here comes Horn. And he almost throws it away. Collins hanging up and under and is fouled to Bellis. That's his second. They almost threw the ball to the official. He gathers. And then not a lot of contact there, but what they called on to Bellis is you're allowed to go vertical, but as soon as you jump sideways and there's contact, that is a blocking foul. It is a cheap foul, but the right call. a lot of chance for U of A inside the arena and now the ASU chance as their fans are finally in this game you know coming in Aaron I, I thought that this Sun Devil team was much better equipped to beat an Arizona team unlike last season they just didn't have the bodies they didn't have the continuity they didn't have the chemistry and that's why I was so disappointed. I'm sure Bobby Hurley was as well in his team's first half effort. This is the type of team, though, that you're seeing in the first two minutes of the second half that is capable of breaking a game open or erasing a deficit. Now, two shots coming here for Frankie Collins. He has struggled with the line this year. And this is the first. Kind of... A inexplicable at the at the free throw line Frankie Collins a good shooter but I, I give Frankie a ton of credit for helping to stabilize this program after two consecutive losing seasons as he misses the second it's out of bounds last touch by Desmond Cambridge jr. And Collins missing both free throws both teams so good from the line of the first half full court pressure Priest able to break it and get it across. Larson. Bottle. Has it stripped. Bottle can't hold on, but Pella Larson gets it back and is injured. He's been banged up a couple of times. Back up on his feet now. Watch the hesitation here from Bottle. I'm not sure. Go right up with that. He pump fakes it, allows Des Cambridge and Warren Washington and Devin Cambridge to get in there. 
That was a foul on Desmond Cambridge Jr. That's his third. Same player. Too easy for the Wildcats. Tabellas now 15. We saw that play in the first half for Pella Larson. Or if it wasn't the same play, it was the same exact cut. The backdoor cut from the strong side to the weak. And Pella Larson missed the layup in the first half. That time, two bells converts it. Horn. Washington two-hand alley-oop flush. Looking low instead, Balo. Balo's got it at the free throw line. There's that push shot runner that he's got down. We saw it in the first half, seen it in the second. And when Arizona wants to run that high low action, we've already talked about it several times in this broadcast already. It works better when Tubelis is at the top and Balo's at the bottom because Tubelis has perimeter type skills. A backdoor Cambridge with the one hand flush. And it is a layup and dunk line right now for Arizona State on the offensive end. Beautiful basketball. Tom Lloyd's got to make some adjustments here. The horn lost to Collins, and Arizona State hasn't missed since halftime. Teresa trying to silence everybody. Can't. And we'll stay with the Wildcats. Last touch by Horn. Oh, what a start to the second half. And sloppy 33rd in the nation. Even though they just got pounded by USF, they're still in the top 40 in the country because of how active they are. Yeah, it's a little easier to go seven for seven when uh, four of those are dunks. A lot of action right at the rim. Tabellas with the spin. And gets it denied. What a block by Devin Cambridge on that one. A horn, little heat check. Their first miss. Balo with the rebound. Tabellas Collins comes in and gets whistled for the foul. That's his third now. You know, one of my favorite matchups I mentioned was Devin Cambridge, who's just 6'6". He's had the principal assignment of guarding Tubelis right there. How about that block with the offhand? Really impressive athleticism. If you are at a disadvantage from height, then be low and be explosive and move your feet. And the Auburn transfer. A couple of seven-footers right here. And they're just keeping them off balance with, with the digs in the post. Look at number one defensively. He's two places at once. Too strong on the three. And Horn with a big board. That well, was Luther Muhammad, number one in white, who did a fantastic job being active and keeping Balo. Uh, he was a little bit indecisive. Now, limited minutes for Muhammad. He... It's a redshirt senior out of New Jersey. Washington stripped. It will stay with the Sun Devils. That was a dangerous pass there from DJ Horn, who's not as comfortable. He's, he's capable in pick and roll situations, but Frankie Collins, their pure point guard, is not in the game right now. So DJ Horn's going to have to be the primary ball handler along with Austin Nunez, Nunez number two. Uh, Cambridge just throws it off to Bellis. They'll start over again. Man, how quickly things changed in this game. I, I, I can't believe how just like underwhelming Arizona has come out in the second half and looks like their performance as Nunez gets a tough contested pull up to go everything going right so far in the second half for ASU and this is his first points of the day Larson cut off 
Muhammad on defense again. Follow. He'll take it. Washington doesn't put up much of a contest there, but it's no good from Balo. Muhammad pulls up, elbow extended. Ho, ho, ho. It's a one possession game. What is going on in Tempe? We've got a timeout. You talk about flipping the scripts. Sun Devils down 17 at half. It's been 18-4 since the break in favor of Arizona State. And it's a one-possession game all of a sudden. Yeah, this re reset everything. This is a new basketball game based on everything that we learned in the first half. Throw that out the window. Sun Devils defensively flying around. It's like there's six of them out there. Cabellas. Shot clock under 10. Larson penetrating. Trying to thread it. Washington gets the block. And Larson is slow to get up, grabbing his left ankle. A foul going against Creasa, his first. The defense has just turned up. The volume in this building has turned up. The defensive intensity. How about Warren Washington and the patience to stay down and wait till Pella Larson brought the ball to him? I don't need to remind Sun Devil fans how big of a win this would be if they can continue to play this way and, and finish it out. Their two biggest wins of the year against Michigan and Creighton, Aaron, have not aged well. Both Michigan and Creighton have been struggling. A rare miss for Arizona State in the second half. And Washington ready right there on the block. That's thrown away. Henderson with the turnover, other end. That was a hard tumble for Devin Cambridge. How about Warren Washington, who's been the quarterback of this defense? He's everything I thought he would be in this game, how important his defense and rim protection has been. And that was actually a good foul. That's a good foul by Tubelas. Don't allow this crowd to continue to get into it and get an and one. Make him earn it at the stripe. Cambridge looked like he took an elbow right to the side of the head. Good to see he's all right. Mm. Well, the one thing Arizona State has not done in the second half is make the few free throws they've been given. They're just the body language. Larson and Tabellus. Aaron, look at all the players for Arizona getting checked out of the game. Their heads are down. They, the look of frustration, you can see it's palpable. And they, had, they were all smiles in the first half, running and dunking. Kirk Risa launching threes. It has been the exact opposite. My question is, this Arizona team, as good as they are, fifth in the country, you see that number next to their name. They have yet to prove they can win a true road game up until this point. The only time they played on the road was at Salt Lake City against the Utes. They got beat by 15. Cambridge gets the second one. It's a two-point game. Yeah. One of the second true road game for Arizona this year. Anderson backs it out. And trying to find some angle. Shot clock under 10. Ramey an air ball. And it falls to Gaffney who is fouled. Arizona offensively, this is a unique lineup. This is not what you normally see. Almost always you're going to have two Bellis or Ballo on the floor. Both are on the bench. So you have Henry Basar as your center. And this lineup does not have a lot of experience together, and you can tell on that last possession. Cambridge. A foul will send this the other way. That was Duke Brennan, his second foul. And I, I'm sure if we put a microphone in front of Bobby Hurley right now, he's fine with this foul. 
let his freshman oh the, i don't know yeah there was he, he did extend his arm he did extend his arm so i guess that was the right call but i, I enjoy watching those guys battle down low as you see umar Balo immediately check back into the game expect him to get a touch on the block right now Balo playing with two fouls to dallas with three because Ellis on the bench still and they're looking for him here's the touch Backing down the freshman, and he was stripped. He lost it, but Vesar recovers, and a much-needed bucket for Arizona. Yeah, really nice first effort defensively from Brennan, but he can't do everything. If he's going to come off his man to make uh, to help out on Ballo, that leaves them vulnerable on the backside. That snapped a Wildcat scoring drought of nearly five minutes. Muhammad. And he stepped out of bounds. That's a turnover from Desmond Cambridge Jr. Under 12 to play in this one. And what a different story. The second half or five team of the country, the Arizona Wildcats, in this great rivalry game. And the Sun Devils have come out from halftime and have just been a completely different story than what we saw in the first half. They got Kerr. Oh, they almost had Kerr dead to rights and he squeezed out of there. But, Aaron, I was on the call for Arizona State's first game as Cedric Henderson Jr. gets a nice floater to go. That was a beautiful shot in the lane. I was on the call for Arizona State's first game of the Pac-12 season in Boulder against Colorado. They were down 15 at half in that game, Aaron. They were over of 13 from three, and they still figured out a way to come back. And Des Cambridge right here hit the three-point shot with under three seconds to go to win that one. I mean, you want to talk about a quick trigger. That was a big-time bucket from Des Cambridge Jr. It's a three-point game. Base are fouled. That was a rare three made by Arizona State today. Yeah, Des Cambridge coming off. He doesn't need a lot of daylight. You mentioned the quick trigger. He did not play in that blowout loss against San Francisco. I'm not sure he would have made a difference, obviously, in a 37-point loss, but he has made 10 threes in the last two games coming into tonight's game and just hit one there. Now he's on the bench with four fouls now. That's a big loss. Preso with under 10 to shoot. Well, Henderson's got to find a way to put this up. He's fouled, and he'll go to the line. Yeah, Cedric Henderson has had success turning down three-point shots and navigating his ways, using that length. Not a lot of contact there, but enough to get the foul call. Watch the pump fake. Ooh, I don't know. I think that was all ball by Frankie yeah. Collins, but the referee in the corner was blocked. I don't know if he's paid a full view of that. Now, Collins now has four fouls, so Cambridge and Collins with four fouls with just over ten minutes to play. He gets both. is back to a two-possession game. And now Collins will get a breather. Jemiah Neal, the sophomore from Toledo, will check back in. Well, Jemiah Neal is a fun player to watch. Number five in white, super long athlete. Still young. He's a better defensive player than he is an offensive player at this moment in time. He pulls up for a deep two. It's an air ball. It falls right to Henderson. Empty possession there for Arizona State. We haven't heard much from Kerr Creesa in this second half. He had double figures in the first. Could this be Creesa time? He gets a touch up top. On the deck. Swatted away by the freshman Brennan, but Balo has it. Balo, head of steam, just throws it up and will go to the line. We're trying to 
think about stepping in front of Umar Balo driving down the lane. It gives me a headache. This guy is <laughs> massive. And how about the skills here? Learning a little bit from Azulis Tubelis. We see him drive all the time to that left hand. At the time it was Umar Balo. Just love the way. Oh, this is our first look at the curtain of distraction, folks. Just, just soak it all in. Well, it did not work against Henderson. It does not work on the first attempt from Balo. Umar Balo, Aaron, has been one of the most improved players in the Pac-12, certainly, maybe even in the country. But he was prepared for this moment. His first two years, he practiced against Drew Timmy at Gonzaga. Then last year, he practiced against Christian Coloco and Azulis Tubelis all season. He got some minutes off the bench, but it wasn't until Azulis Tubelis turned his ankle against Stanford that Balo came in for Tubelis, and he scored 21 points in 22 minutes of play, and he kind of solidified his role on the roster and the rest is history. He's been awesome this season. Yes, he has. The free throw line has helped Arizona stretch to lead to seven. Washington gets a fingertip on it. It falls to Balo after touching to Bellis. Teresa to Tabellis. You don't see Azulis Tubelis miss too many of those. This is his patented. He gets to turn to his strong left hand over his right shoulder. And that was about a three-foot bunny. And he makes those nine times out of ten. Not only does he miss the shot, but he picks up his third foul. Foul trouble has been one of the overriding stories, unfortunately, in this game, Aaron. Look at Collins and Cambridge. Desmond Cambridge Jr. both with four for Arizona State. Bono and Tabellis both with three. This won't fall. Washington fighting for it, but it falls to Henderson. Arizona has made just two of the last ten from the floor. Bono back to the basket. Henderson triggers from deep. Running skip past Muhammad. Henderson denies. Tabellis had esteem. The big man will slow it down in the corner. Pass. Alley -oop. Up top. Throwing it down. Balo with the flush. Really lost. Stretch to lead to nine now. Multiple times, Arizona State got it to a single possession deficit. It's a 6-0 run for Arizona. Meanwhile, the Sun Devils have missed six of their last seven. And have a scoring drought approaching two minutes and 40 seconds. Muhammad pulls up for a two. And he hits. Simple basketball, Aaron. That play is called zoom action, where you give the ball at the top of the key to your big, and you run a stagger screen into a dribble handoff. It's very difficult to guard, especially a guy like Luther Muhammad, who loves to pull up off the bounce. Larson feeding Balo with position. He can't finish. Washington was right there. Clean defense. They push it ahead. Washington off his fingertips. Too high to handle. Arizona ball when we come back under eight to play what a second half this one has become Forms for the first time a version of the blue unis the Wildcats wore back in 1997 for their national championship run That's the last time that a Pac-12 school has won a national championship Which is kind of crazy if you think about it My friend Miles Simon was the MOP of the final four that year this is knocked loose and out of bounds. I think Kirk Creasa might be the only player in college basketball with his first name on the back of the jersey, but it makes sense because it's Steve Kerr, number 25. Got to, right? That's right. Ramey taking a deep straightaway three. Too strong. 
Washington rips down the rebound. Muhammad pulls up. Balo. Couple of contested jump shots off the bounce. Both of these teams are capable of making it, but right here, this is what Arizona wants. They want cuts to the rim and post ups. Now trying to go back door, not free. Last touch off of Ramey. Sun Devils ball. Uh, turnovers have been a problem for Tommy Lloyd and, you know, in, in his tenure there last year. Arizona led the entire Pac-12 in turnovers per game and total for the season, but it's understandable when you consider the pace they play at. There's no question. We'll stay on this end once again. Under seven minutes to play. And, and I always say, Aaron, if, if you want a masterpiece, you got to allow the artist to spill a little bit of paint. You don't want too much now, but you, you got to have give your guys a little bit of freedom. And both Bobby Hurley and Tommy Lloyd do a nice job of allowing their players to play and not try and micromanage everything on the offensive end. Washington, pardon me, Muhammad. Sabellis in the corner. He's leading all scores with 15. Look at the clock here. Well, Larson. Balao trying to keep it alive. Instead, Horn. He brings it across. Nunez baseline. Cambridge. Well, for as hot as Arizona State was, they have certainly cooled scoreless the last two and a half minutes. And even though that shot didn't go down, I love the ball movement. Taking threes, like, quickly off a break, maybe contested or bad shots. That was a good shot. The ball moved side to side. Four different Sun Devils touched the ball. Develops pretty move and finish right there at the rim. The timing of that post-up, Aaron, was crucial. Right when Tubelis became open, the ball hit his giant paw and led him right into that layup. Devin Cambridge ends up throwing it away. Muhammad had a chance to try to save it, but could not get there. Post-offense isn't just about getting open it's about when you get open because those guys have a time limit down there if they got one foot in the paint they can only be down there for three seconds so when they are deep the ball's got to be delivered on time on target that time it was courtney ramey who's been really nice but the kirk Reese and courtney ramey have been excellent with their timing passes tonight it was ramey who threw that alley-oop to Balo several minutes ago and that time he delivers the beautiful post touch and Tabellis approaching double-double territory. 17 points as you saw. Seven boards. Follow very similar. Ramey. Tabalo. Couple of fakes. No foul. Can't finish. Tabellis. He puts it up. And Tabellis continues his second half. He's got 19 now. And Arizona has stretched to lead the double figures. Well, we've been touting this is the best front court duo in the country, and that possession was just the latest example. You take away Balo with two bodies, and now you got to deal with the Jules Tubelis. Cambridge trying to dial in one deep. It's off the top of the backboard. Last touch, Arizona. Back to Tubelis. So Balo's going to take two or three bodies, and then Julius Tubelis is going to take his turn. That time Warren Washington, the rim protector for Arizona State, couldn't couldn't block that one. And go ahead and flex your muscles. All right, he's, he, his biceps aren't that big, but I'm not mad at him because he's the first team All-American this year. Uh, they lob it up to Washington after he's able to gather. He gets two. Arizona State gets it back to single digits. Watch Cambridge number four. Deflection, steals, he's in passing lanes. Back to Bala. 
Two seven-footers down there. Larson, wing three. Follow offensive board. Under four to play. Pell Larson has really struggled. A, a super talented player, just one for six from the field. Parisa. Well, three-point line has not been kind to either side since halftime. Collins back on the floor. He's playing with four fouls. Number 10 in white. They need to reset this offense here. Oh, and Arizona just gives it right back. They had two of them in the vicinity, and neither could hold on. I'm out of the floor. Arizona back in front. These guys work. I mean, coming into the game, Umar Ball is shooting 74%. He's well below those averages. But you, it's just so hard to completely take away both of these players. And that's what makes us so such a unique team. We asked Tommy Lloyd about it because there aren't a lot of coaches or teams that play two bigs at the same time. He loves playing two bigs. And the biggest reason why is offensively, if a team wants to switch they want defensively they're going to switch everything arizona's a team that can actually make you pay for those switches by pounding the ball down low desmond cambridge jr has been on the bench for four fouls back on the floor Bala with that rebound just secured his sixth double double of the year approaching the three minute mark Get to Bellis a touch on the block against Devin Cambridge. Yep. He's fouled. I mean, I don't want. I, I don't know more about coaching basketball than Tommy Lloyd. I get. I, I, I'm promising you that. But sometimes basketball is simple. Clear it out. Get your best player the ball on his favorite block, which is the right block, so he can turn to his left hand. And there's really not a whole lot Devin Cambridge can do if you deliver a good pass. Ninth time this year, Tabellis has reached the 20 point mark. He's the Pac 12's leading scorer. Now Aaron, I, I would argue that this is his team. This is Azulis to Bellis' team. Now, this Arizona team's got a bunch of dudes on it. I get it. They're all really, really nice players, including Umar Balo. But if I had to choose one guy with this identity, it, it's Azulis to Bellis. And last year, he wasn't really fully healthy, and it wasn't necessarily his team. Well, he's having a monster year. Collins, the turnover. Skip pass ahead, and it's last touch by Tabellis. By the way, in a game that has gotten as close as this one has, even though Arizona now starting to separate with 240 to play a 10-point lead. That miss from Tabellas on the second free throw, only the second missed free throw by the Wildcats today. They're 19 for 21. Arizona State 5 for 8. Collins, he hits that. He's in double figures now. Deflected by Cambridge. A really nice shot by Frankie Collins, and that allows Arizona State to set up this full-court pressure. The last two and a half minutes of this game, make or miss, expect everybody in a white jersey to be up, pressuring the ball, and jump switching and trapping. There's a trap on Larson. He's able to break it. Ramey tries to dish it to Balo, deflected by Washington. Will be Arizona ball. And there's Washington, and that's, again, an excellent example of an athletic seven-footer that can play both. He can play the ball, he can play his man. Bobby Hurley wants the tee. You know, those two guys were getting tangled up, it looked like. Yeah, he definitely wants the tee. This has a monitor. Washington and Dallas were getting into it a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a a right Cambridge arm shove. And Tabellus. Oh, they are at the table looking at this. The entire arena, including you, you saw Julius Tabellus. Yeah. So obviously that was a shove. That was. 
exaggerated by Devin Cambridge, and I'm not mad at it. I'm not accusing him of anything. I, like, look, I was a player once. I'd have done anything to get a technical foul against my opponent. <laughs> but, but this should not be a technical foul. Look, this is a, a in-state rivalry game. I don't believe this should be a common foul if they want to change it, but not an intentional or technical foul. But you do believe that there's enough there from what you saw to make it a common foul. I, I do. And you know, you know what confirmed it for me? You know when we showed Azulis to Bellis and the entire team looking at the big Jumbotron there, and they were all watching it in the arena. And once he saw it, Azulis to Bellis put his head down and was like, oh man, I just got caught. So he, even he admitted it. Well, nothing has been announced. This is obviously a big call, Aaron. This is a, a single-digit deficit for Arizona State trying to claw back in it. If they can get free points any way possible with the clock stopped, that would be massive. I want to get this right here. Casey, they are calling this a technical foul on Tavellas. I'm surprised. I guess by letter of the law, you know, unnecessary, not a basketball play or, but still, I, big break for Arizona State. Got to make these free throws, see if this can change momentum. It's a flagrant one, two free throws coming for Arizona State. Yeah, and Bobby needs a new shirt. And DJ Horn was at the line ready to shoot his free throws, but because the foul was on uh, against Devin Cambridge, he has to go to the line to shoot those. Just a 68% foul shooter, which is actually a career high for him. He's not comfortable in this situation. <laughs> It touched every bit of paint on that rim, but it goes through. That's the fourth foul on Tabellus, by the way. He gets both. Big free throws. Massive. Well done by Devin Cambridge. It's, it's actually harder to do than you think, stepping up to the foul line with nobody there. It's just you. It's like the loneliest position in the world on the basketball floor. Now a two oh, two game, 16 to play. That's right. It's a six-point game, and Arizona State has the ball. Cambridge, quick release. Huge rebound from Balo. He adds on to his day of a double-double. That's a monster board. The conference is leading rebounder. Des Cambridge made up his mind before this ball was ever thrown to him that he was going to catch it and shoot it no matter what. I'm not mad at him because he has, you know, big game tendencies to, to make shots like that. I mentioned the, the three that he made against Colorado to win that one, but that was a forced contested three. And you mentioned it, Umar Ballo with a, an impressive physical rebound outside of his area. At 12 points, 11 boards now for Bottle. That was the fourth foul of Devin Cambridge. Now, Bob, you can see his hand, his struggles clearly at the free throw line this season, but that has not been the case today. We'll see if that trend continues. His first miss. And it's recovered by Horn. Under two minutes to play. Bella Larson had his hands on that basketball, and DJ Horn took it away. Spin move. Cambridge, tough shot deflected by Larson. 
He, he didn't need it. There were still seven seconds on the shot clock, which I know isn't a, a huge amount of time, but certainly didn't have to force that one. So consecutive possessions in both times. That's Cambridge Jr. with really tough shots. Pocket pick, but a foul. That's it for Cam Cambridge. Devin Cambridge is fouled out. Kirk Reese uh, almost got an offensive foul in this possession. He pushed off. Watch him push off with his left hand to try and create space here. The left arm right there into the chest. They didn't call it. They called it the foul on Devin Cambridge there. That easily could have been an offensive foul on Kirk Reese. Well, Cambridge day is done. Nine points and a couple of boards. Just picked up his fifth foul. 118 to play. Big free throws coming here for Parisa. Has missed once today at the line. A tremendous free throw shooter. And he gets the front end. His first points of the second half. He had 10 in the first. And that was his first point of the second half they haven't really needed him as much we need him now uh, he makes both it has been a sensational day for the Wildcats at the free throw line that I'll call Bobby Hurley Arizona 21 for 24 from the stripe today in performance, eight rebounds, Balo 12 and 12. And yet Arizona hanging in, Arizona State hanging in there. 114 to play. Horn. Corner three left open. A bad miss. But neither team has shot the three ball well at all in the second half. Arizona State one for 11 from behind the arc since halftime. Four time out, yep. Timeout call. The Arizona State offensively losing the patience that they had had closing this deficit to where it was. S2 and the Fox Sports app. We will get you there here on Fox at the conclusion of this one. 66 58, 54 seconds remaining. This might be a little bit too early to play the foul game if you're Arizona State, but. They have to at least try and get a steal, a trap, a turnover. Priest has got it up top. Collins playing with four fouls. Priest, shot clock winding down and rattles in and out. Pella Larson, the offensive rebound. And now a foul. Wow. Left the fifth foul on Des Cambridge Jr. He's done. A, a mistimed rebound there from, from Des Cambridge. And how about Pella Larson? We haven't called his name very, very much. He's only made one basket. It's one for six from the field. But he's still out there on the floor. Why? Because he's one of the best defensive players that Tommy Lloyd has on his roster. And he trusts him in moments just like this to make the right play. Gets an offensive rebound. It was a tidal wave from Arizona State at the start of the second half. They were down 17 and twice, maybe even more than that, multiple times brought it within a one possession game. Number five, Arizona, however, comes to Tempe and their overall domination of the Sun Devils. Collins, a great foot in. Will continue today. Arizona State. Now, number five. Excuse me, Aaron. Defensively, they showed up. O over the course of this game, their defense showed up. You hold Arizona to what's likely going to be under 70 points. That is hard to do. This team averages over 90, right? But their offense left a lot to be desired. Three for 27 from the three-point arc in front of your home fans in an in-state rivalry game. It, w it wasn't good enough from a shooting perspective, and it bit them. 
Larson to the free throw line. Now the lowest point total for Arizona this year is 66. That was in their only loss at Utah. So, to your point, Casey, Arizona State's defense did hold down the nation's second-best offensive team, averaging 90 a game. However, Arizona, the number five team of the country, wins today 69-60. to And they win once again their fifth in a row against their in-state rival. Coming up next, we'll send you to Chicago, number 21, Creighton, versus the 